So you're still going to that utility or global screen on your keyboard and pressing that transpose button to plus two or negative three or whatever. Does that make you not a real musician? Let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. So the transpose button is something that has been talked about, you know, among musicians since its advent on keyboards. You know, formerly trained pianists and organists who were burdened with having to play the keys as they were, so to speak, and, you know, had to learn to play in all keys, were always frustrated at musicians who could simply go to a keyboard, learn a song in one key, and be able to play that same song in every key with just the press of a button. And playing a song in a different key on a piano is substantially more difficult than it is playing in a different key on, say, another instrument. You know, like guitar and bass players, literally all they have to do in most cases is just shift their position on their frets and they're in a different key. Their fingering doesn't have to change or anything like that. And even horn players like sax players, you know, they do have it a little bit more difficult where they have to play, you know, especially a sax player where they're having to play sharp and flat notes with these, this part of their hand on their horn and stuff like that. But even they have a way out. And their way out is the reason why a lot of times you see a lot of sax players on stage with multiple saxophones. You'll see them with an alto sax and a tenor sax or an alto and a soprano or something like that. It's because these horns have different transpositions. The soprano and tenor sax is what's known as a B flat horn. So it's transposition, meaning the way that you play a song in one key on this, these particular horns are different than what you would play on the alto sax, which is an E flat transposition horn. So even saxophone players have their way out of this whole, you know, difficulty in transposing thing. If they're on stage and a song starts off and they have a horn in their hand that they don't like the key and can't really play in that key, they put that horn down, pick up the one that's easier to play in and they're good to go. That's their transposition. But nevertheless, it's the keyboard players who always get the most grief about transposing. So should you do it? Is it a bad thing? And what do musicians in the professional world think about keyboard players transposing? Now I'll answer those questions, but first let me tell you a few reasons why it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. And before we move on, if you're getting value out of this video so far, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video. That lets me know that you appreciate this type of content and it lets me know what type of content to make for you in the future. So one of the good things about transposing on the keyboard is the obvious thing, which is it works. I mean, if you can't play a song in a particular key, you know, you got that out. Just hit that global screen, hit plus one, plus two or whatever, and you're good to go with playing in whatever key you can play in. And another good thing about transposing is that it allows you to hear what other keys sound like. And this is a common issue for musicians who play by ear, especially musicians who are just starting out. You know, they learn how to play in one key and it's hard for them to hear things in a different key or what it should sound like. So this gives you the ability to at least train your ear a little bit, hit that transpose button, play the song in the key that you know how to play. And then when you go back to, you know, the original setting on the keyboard, you at least have, you know, a reference point in your mind as to how this song is supposed to sound in another key. Now, some of the bad things about transposing is that transposing can become a crutch. You know, playing in all keys on a piano when you're first starting out and even when you're at a sort of intermediate level is very difficult. And you couple that with the fact that the situations that most of us musicians play in always feels like or seems like there's a competition going on where you have to, you know, meet some standard, you know, be it a gig or even church or whatever. You know, you couple that with, you know, the difficulty of that. Nobody wants to look bad. So it's really easy to just, man, let me hit that transpose button really quick so I can sound good and play, you know, whatever is being played in the key that I can play it in. And because it's such an easy thing to do over time, it becomes a habit and a hindrance from you learning in other keys. It's easier just, man, let me just hit the transpose button. You can literally do it in a few seconds. Whereas learning a song in a different key that you don't know how to play in can take weeks or even months. And this is not a joke. I know musicians and pianists right now who literally can play in one key on the keyboard and they're killer in that key. They can do all kinds of fancy stuff but you ask them to go to another key, they're hitting the transpose button because they literally do not know how to play in the other keys. 
So transposing is something that if you're not careful with, can become a crutch and a hindrance to, you know, you learning how to play in other keys on the piano. And another bad thing about transposing is you forget to turn that transpose button off. Now I'm telling you, there is nothing more embarrassing than being on stage, starting a song off, thinking that you're playing in one key, but you really got that transpose button on and you forgot to turn it off and you start the song in the wrong key. That is such an embarrassing thing. And you wanna know what may even be more frustrating than that? is somebody getting on their keyboard behind you, you know, in a situation where you have to share the keyboard like a church or something like that, them getting on their keyboard behind you, not knowing that you had the transpose button engaged to, you know, plus three or plus four or something like that, and them starting off a song and then them playing in the wrong key. That is one of the most frustrating things for us pianists and musicians that happens in these sort of situations. So forgetting to turn that transpose button off is a thing and it's one of the main reasons why you should not be using it. And another reason to not use that transpose button is because you never know what sort of situations you're gonna be in. There's a lot of gigs that I play and a lot of things that I get called for where they already have a piano, like a real grand piano set up in there, you know, no transpose button, not a MIDI piano, not one of those things or anything like that, or even, you know, you have to go play organ at a church or something like that. And unless they have that, organ with the transpose button on. I think it's a super B3 or something like that, that organ that had the transpose switch on it, which most churches have kind of, you know, moved away from these days. But in situations like that, you don't have that ability to transpose. And you know, a lot of these situations are situations where people come up, hey, do you know this song? Can you play this song for me? And it's like, yeah, I know the song, but it's, you know, in this key. And they ask you to play it in a different key. And you're kind of out of luck if you don't know how to play it in those situations because you haven't learned to play all your, all of your keys. So unless you have a keyboard that you're carrying around with you all the time and that you can pull out on a whim, you know, this is one of the reasons why using that transpose button can be a bad thing. So the question still remains, should you transpose? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What do musicians in the professional world think about it? And here is the answer. You ready? Nobody cares. I'm really serious about that. Nobody really cares. And you have to understand what I mean by that. You know, this whole controversy about whether or not a keyboard player should transpose is like mostly just a, a thing like among, you know, forums on Facebook groups and stuff like that where people are talking about it. When you're in a real situation and you have to play music, what really people care about or what people really care about is you playing the music correctly. They don't care how you've gotten there. In most cases, they don't care if you're playing a bass guitar and you've tuned that bass guitar, you know, down, you know, a whole step or a half step or something like that. They don't care if you have a soprano sax or an alto sax or a tenor sax on stage, provided it's the right sax for the song. Nobody really cares about that. And just the same, nobody really cares if you have the plus one or plus two, negative one, negative two, transpose button engaged on your keyboard. What professional musicians really care about is you being able to play the music. It's one of these situations that's way overhyped. So don't get caught up in this hype of, you know, people doing that. There's nobody cracking whip over you saying, thou shall not use the transpose button on your keyboard. Like that's just not happening. So don't get wrapped up into this sort of thing. Now that said, Ideally, it is probably best to not use the transpose button, at least on any sort of regular basis. And instead, you know, go through the efforts of learning how to play in all keys on the piano or on the keyboard, but not for the sake of, you know, other people, you know, talking about it and saying what you should or shouldn't do because they have no bearing on your musical career at all. Anyway, in most cases it's because, you know, doing so and learning in other keys is something that broadens your ability on the keyboard and the piano learning all of the keys on the piano, you know, gives you this sort of relationship of or understanding of the relationship of how all keys work together on the keyboard. So it's something that broadens your understanding. And even if you start to, you know, only stick with a few keys that you play in, learning those other keys helps you understand those keys that you like already a whole lot better. And guess what? Even me, I have a degree in music. I've done, you know, recitals of Baroque and classical and romantic period and, you know, contemporary music, you know, on stages and play with artists across the world. And guess what? I still use the transpose button sometimes. 
Like, bro, I don't know giant steps in all keys. That's just something I'm not interested in learning. Like, I know it's a thing. A lot of people do this thing where giant steps and they learn it in all keys. I'm literally just not interested in doing that. I like that song in the key that it's in. Most musicians, when you're on stage, you're gonna play it that it's in. So for me personally, just my opinion, it seems like a waste of my time to sit there and learn it in all keys. So like if you call out giant steps while we're on stage playing it and you want it in the key that's not the original key, I'm going straight to that global screen and I'm gonna hit plus one, plus two, or whatever, and we're gonna get the song done. It's That's just the way it's gonna be. And also one of the things about the transpose button is that, you know, people like to transpose to keys that, you know, are generally considered easier keys on the piano and stuff like that. For me, it's even different than that. Like I like playing songs in harder keys. So sometimes I'll even use a transpose button when it's, you know, something that I, I know really well or something like that. I'll transpose it to a, you know, a, a more hard key that I don't normally play the song in just to play it on stage and practice. So I use the transpose button for that. So it can even be used as a learning tool. So look, the answer to this is really simple. Use the transpose button to your heart's desire. Your musical journey is just that. It's your musical journey. I have no say so over, you know, what you do or how you do it. If I hire you for a gig, my only concern is that you show up and you know the music. I don't care what keyboard you use, you know, provided it's something, you know, professional that you don't bring some toy on stage or something like that. But if I hire you a gig, all I want to be concerned with is whether or not you know the music. If you're playing or using some of the transpose buttons on, you know, some of the songs or all of them, I don't really care. Like just play the music. That's all, you know, professional musicians in general care about. Your use of the transpose button, again, provided it doesn't hinder anything, like you can get to your screens and adjust everything that you need to do in time for us to play the songs, it's no concern to me. I don't really care. So question for you, do you use the transpose button? Or how do you feel about musicians and pianists using the transpose button on their keyboard, you know, on shows or just in general? Jump down in the comments and let me know. I definitely wanna hear your thoughts on that. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful for you. And again, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.